Okay. Let's see if that works. Yeah. Okay. All right, here. Let's uh, see if we can get this cracking. All right. <clears throat> Greetings, everyone. This is Cassandra, um, formerly known as Iapo, also known as the Rogue Black Girl. And I am doing a little something different today. So um, let me just say the title of this live that I'm doing or this video that I'm doing is called Why I Changed My Name Back to Cassandra. And I thought that it was important for me to share that with you guys because over the last few days, I have spent um, a considerable amount of time, didn't think it was going to take a considerable amount of time, changing my name on all of my social media back to Cassandra, my birth name. And um, <clears throat> this was something that I have been <laughs> struggling with and deliberating over for a long time, um, despite already knowing the answer, right? So about, let's see, um, 2016, I'm gonna give you some background and I'm going to um, explain some things, so walk with me, okay? And I will just preface by saying, this is a part of shadow work. You know, at least my shadow work. It was about um, being able to um, let go of attachments, um, being able to relinquish control, right? Based on attachments, being able to understand when you have evolved past a certain period in your life. And that, that, that evolution requiring you to let go of those things that have defined you in the past. So that's the start of this. The beginning of this process, um, well, I will say the beginning of the decision, right, to change my name, started in 2016. In 2016, <clears throat> I was, um, I received a reading from a Babalao in Tampa, Florida. It was a name, re uh, uh, it was a, um, it was, a, oh my God. It was a, it was a ceremony. It was a, a reading to determine, uh, a head reading. It was to determine which Orisha in the Ifa tradition uh, sits on my head, okay? Now, in this name reading, I, <clears throat> it's not really pertinent to this discussion, but well, you know, maybe it is. In this, in this ceremony, I was read as a child of ocean, okay? And maybe I'll tell you guys that story another day, but I was read as a child of ocean, and at the end of the reading, the Babalao asked me, do you have any questions for me? The one question that I had, this was in 2016, okay? The one question that I had was, this was six years ago, um, should I change my name? My name at that time is what you guys remember it, Iapo Moyende Ngina. And I asked this Babalao of all the things that I could have asked him in this, in this ritual, in this ceremony, I asked him, should I change my name? And he read it and he said, no. So I said, okay. But there was a reason that I felt called to ask him, should I change my name? But once he said no, I let go of it. Well, a year ago, last month, May, a year ago, I went into a ceremony here in California, in San Diego. I was woken up at six o'clock in the morning by a friend who asked me if I wanted to do ayahuasca with him and his partner. And he asked, though I had told him several times, I was not going to do that, right? 
And that morning he called me at six o'clock in the morning and I was like, you know what? Yes, I am. I'm going to go to San Diego with you guys and I'm going to do, I'm going to do ayahuasca. This was the last time that I did ayahuasca a year ago in May. So I did the ceremony and um, so I'll tell you guys that story another day too. But basically I ended up having to leave the group. I could not be, there were about eight other people in the ceremony and um, I took the medicine and the times that I had done ayahuasca before, it took about an hour for me to, um, to begin ceremony. It took me about an hour to start sensing that I was in ceremony, right? Um, I took this medicine in this room with these eight people, many of whom were strangers, took this medicine, laid back, and 10 minutes in, I sat up and I was like, I can't be in here. <laughs> this is not, I can't be here. So I got up and I left the room. And the facilitator's wife, um, her name was Alma, she said, um, I will sit with you in ceremony. <clears throat> she's like it's obvious that you can't be in there so whatever you need you say what you need your ceremony to be so we sat on the grass in this woman's front yard for five hours while I went that I went through during this process now this is the first time that this woman's ever met me during this process she uh she asked me she said I'm sorry tell me your name again I said Iapo she said what does it mean now, let me just tell you, over the years that I've been using, I've been Iapo since 2003. And over the years that I have used this name and was proud of this name, felt like I'd earned this name, right? I'm going to tell you what it means in a minute, but I felt like I earned this name. So many of the great things that I've done politically and spiritually, I've done as Iapo. But I will tell you, Every time someone asked me what my name means, I felt hesitation to say. Every time. I love the name. Everyone who meets me as Iapo is like, oh my God, that name is great, right? And, um, and I'm going to tell you how I got the name too. But anyway, in the ceremony, on this woman's front yard, in this bougie-ass neighborhood in San Diego, while full the fuck in on ayahuasca, I, uh, she asked me, what is your name again? And I told her it's Iapo. And she said, what does that name mean? And I hesitated. And she said, why did you hesitate? She, she caught it even before I said, I said, the name means one who's been through many struggles. And she said, Iapo, you have to change your name. This woman ain't never met me, didn't know anything about my past, didn't know anything about E5, nothing. She sat on the front yard with me and she says, you have to change your name. She says, you either have to change your name or you have to change the meaning of your name. She said, it may have served you, but the energetic, the energetic vibration of your name is going to lock you into a life of struggle. She said, it's not a, she said, it's not a recognition of the past, one who's been through many struggles. It is to keep you locked into these struggles, right? And I was like, you know what? I just started laughing. I said, because I have felt that, I have intuitively felt that for years, but because of my pride, because of my um, control, because of the power that that name has presented in the world as a political activist and as you know a spiritual woman i rejected for years what my intuition had been telling me since 2016 that i needed to change my name right but it was a it was a journey that i had to go through it was a lesson that i needed to learn right so she said you got to change your name baby or you got to change the meaning of your name i was like hmm maybe i can do a ritual to change the meaning of my name which I did. This is about this is about shadow work. Now, I hope y'all are walking with me. I'm not rambling. I'm trying to I'm trying to teach you something right now. So, she says, change your name or change the meaning of your name. This woman who I've never seen again since. 
never met before, never seen again since. Thank you everybody for that's tuning in and that's coming in. Walk with me, okay? So she says, change your name or change the meaning of your name. Still in this place of being cool. Damn, I hadn't even thought about that. Yes, what I'm going to do is I am going to hold a ceremony to change the meaning of my name, to change the frequency of my name. And I have no problem with that because I'm God. That's what I do. I create. I can change everything. So I said, hey, cool. I'm going to change the meaning of my name. Had a big old ritual, blood of fire in my homegirl's backyard. You understand what I'm saying? Did this whole ritual that I created to change the meaning of my name. This happened in December. I did this on the solstice, winter solstice, this year, this past year. Okay. Then I taught a workshop for seven weeks on the coming Pluto returns, America's first Pluto returns, which began on February 20th, 2022. And in teaching this workshop, getting really deep and personal with what this astrological and astronomical event is going to mean in, in the world, in this country, and within each of us individually, like shadow work is the thing that we have to be focusing on for the next two years. That's it, right? So I've been doing all the shadow work, baby, going over my whole life. Like I got this exercise in a reading that I did for myself the exercise was to, for each year that I can remember since I was born, writing down one significant event each year as long as I can remember. Well, I have memories of my life, clear, vivid memories since I was one years old of my life, right? So I started this exercise and maybe... Let me just tell you, that's the video I can do another day too. But to go over your life in an exercise that says, for every year that you can recall, write one significant event down. That shit is powerful. That shit is like getting punched in your fucking chest and having the wind knocked out of you. Understand? So I started that. I haven't even got, I don't even think I made it to age 10 yet. You understand? So I go, I start that thing. Meanwhile, I still had not, even though I did this radical ceremony to change the meaning of my name, to take power over this name that I earned, you understand? And then the other part of the work that I've been doing, you know, for those who do tune in, I've been reading this book, The Great Cosmic Mother, Rediscovering the Religion of the Earth by Monica Zhu and Barbara Moore. I read this book three days a week to you guys. In reading this book for the fourth time, and something comes through every single time, and these, these things that I have been experiencing in my relationship with my mother, my, my earthly mother, you know, um, paying tithes to my mother without her knowing, by the way, um, you know, sending her money. That is a percentage of what I earn. Um, not giving her gifts on mother's day, but giving her a gift the day she became a mother, which was my birthday. I'm her firstborn, right? Giving her her mother's day gift on the day that she became a mother instead of her feeling obligated to give me something for my birthday. Right. Uh, these little rituals I've started engaging in, for my own spiritual growth and development, right? And baby, let me just tell you, it has been my position for about three years now in this journey that I've been on that the secret, it's still my position and you do not have to agree. I'm just telling you why I changed my name. That's why I, this whole video, that the secret to overturning this quagmire that we are confronted with the easiest thing that we can do, the most efficient weapon tool in our arsenal to begin to dismantle this shit in real time is going back to our mother, our earthly mother. I'm talking about the person that made it possible for us as spirit <clears throat> to become flesh and attempt 
to fulfill the destiny that we saw before we got here. Right? That it has been the main tool of um, patriarchy in general and its, its hitchmen as these established patriarchal religions, the primary weapon that has been the most effective is the demotion of the mother, our earthly mothers, of the motion of the uh, of the mother to simple vessel for spirit to come through. She just a vessel, not important. You understand? She just she just give birth to you. You understand? You swing off her titties for a couple of years. She take care of you, wipe your ass and shit. But that's her role. That's her lot in life. Is just that's that's insignificant in the grand scheme of things. The greatest weapon of every patriarchal tradition on earth has been the radical reduction of the mother to an instrument for God to manifest itself. Right? I'm going to have to do another video, which I've been planning on doing for a while, about my first experience with ayahuasca and what ayahuasca, what spirit, what ancestors, what God told me in ayahuasca. Now, we'll leave you with this in terms of that. My first time in ayahuasca, God told me that God being me, that God being my ancestors, that God being my spirit guides, that God being all of that, right? That God being my flesh, by the way. God told me that only God can give birth to God, right? Only God can give birth to God. And what has happened and condemned the earth is the reduction of God to a servant, the reduction of God to a mere vessel. That's what God told me in ceremony. All right. So anyway, in this in this walk that I've been doing, right, um, I have been really trying to live up to that, to honor my mother, to be more mindful of those moments when I get short with her or frustrated with her for whatever reason. This triggering ass shit that's conditioned in us, right? To um, to check in with her more often, you know what I'm saying? To tell her things about just on G how beautiful she is, how much she means to me, those kinds of things, right? At paying her tithes. I spent years as a Christian paying the church tithes. I was like, well, damn, if I believe what the fuck I say, maybe I need to be sending my mama money. She ain't got to know because my mama is a Christian. So I would never dare to, um, to disrespect her by saying, mama, I'm going to send you tithes. She would be offended. I know she would, right? So I just say, you know, I got a little something I want to send you. You know, um, I hope it can be useful. She ain't got to know. She ain't got to know. It is the frequency. It is the intention that creates transformation in us. You understand what I'm saying? So I say, okay, I'm honoring my mother. I'm honoring my mother. I'm thinking I'm being all like super progressive and shit. This is a line I hadn't considered. This is what I even teach my patients. This is even what I teach my clients. That we have to get back to our beginning in this incarnation. That is her. That's her. Yes, I get it. We got we got drama. We got trauma. You understand what I'm saying? Doesn't matter. At the end of the day, I'm telling you, it is hard. It is hard. I have heard patients tell me shit that has had me in tears about their relationship with their mother, about trauma that they have received from their mother, about all of, this, all of the dynamics that we are all confronted with in one way or another, I get it. And I am empathetic to that. But I also know that if I am going to teach people that I believe that the key to dismantling patriarchy cannot be overstepped. We do all the right things. We feed the people. We participate in political life. We do all the great shit. And so many so-called revolutionaries, so many progressive people, so many spiritual workers that I know have fucked up dysfunctional, hostile relationships with their mothers. We give more empathy, empathy to strangers than we do, empathy and understanding to strangers than we do to our mothers. Right? And so I'm telling you, and I don't mean you have to be in a, in a physical relationship with your mother to honor and be grateful for your existence that could not have happened without her. There are some people that I know, patients, who were adopted, never knew their earthly mother. 
does not mean you cannot honor her. It does not mean that you can't light a candle and say, I am so grateful that my mother said yes to my life when she could have said no. And that be enough. I am so grateful that my mother said yes to my life when she could have said no. My prayer or my, you know, my affirmation in the morning is I am so thankful that God known as Jacqueline Jeanette Futch said yes to my life when she could have said no. Because God gave birth to me. I can't be God if my mama ain't God. God gave birth to me. So that's my meditation in the morning. No matter how fucked up shit is, no matter how much shit I'm going through, I'm so grateful that my that God, known as Jacqueline Jeanette Futch, said yes to my life when she could have said no. Right? Anytime somebody tells me that I treat, oh my God, Iapo, I didn't think I was going to be able to get better. The first thing that I say is, I am so grateful to God, known as Jacqueline Jeanette Futch, for saying yes to my life when she could have said no. Because had she said no, I would not have been able to help this person. That's what I say. My gifts, the people that I help, the people who come into my life and help me, I say, thank God my mama said yes when she could have said no. That's power. It is the origin of all power on this planet, on this earth. The origin of all power is the fact that there are portals walking around with the potential to transform spirit into flesh. That's it. And so I'm doing all this work with myself. I'm having all these conversations with my, my clients and my patients and, and my friends and anybody who will listen. And then it struck me, the resistance that I had always had to changing my name was still based in the same thing. Now, let me just tell you, I recognize and I understand the history of why Black people in particular change their names. This is a long history that we've had based on our relationship to the white world. That's it. That's the basis, is that we are the only group of people on the fucking planet Earth who have been hijacked from our national homeland, drug across boundaries that we couldn't go back across on our own, and held captive on foreign land for the expressed purpose of creating real life for someone else. Right? I get it. And because this dynamic in our relationship exists, is why I'm empathetic to why Black people regularly change their names. Sojourner Truth did it. Um, um, who else? Um, you know, anybody who joins the Nation of Islam does it. Malcolm X popularized it. We all do it for some reason or not. Those who come into the traditions of their ancestors do it. We take a traditional Yoruba name, right? We all do it. When I became a political activist, well, when I joined this political organization in 2001, the African People's Socialist Party, um, everybody had these beautiful, powerful African names and I was still my birth name. I'm gonna tell you about it in a minute. So I did work with this organization um, for a long, long time. But after about two years of being in the organization, managing the wellness program, um, I was like, you know what? I need an African name. But I was like, you know what? I don't want to give myself an African name. I asked a brother um, who was the chair of our organizational branch in Oakland. I said, look, I want you to take a year and come and, and give me an African name based on what you see, you know, in me as a person or whatever. Right. So the brother um, who will remain, you know, remain nameless calls me a year later. He's like, I have your name. And he tells me Iapo Moyende Ngina, which I, I accepted the name given to me by this elder in the movement. Okay. And from that day on, Everybody that knew me as my birth name in my circle, my clients, I was doing hair full time at the time and, you know, working with the organization. It was a struggle to get non-organizational people to call me Iapo. Like I was having to have throwdowns with brothers in the hood 
about calling me Iapo, right? And you hear the tired old line, you know, that's the name your mama gave you. Why I got to call you Iapo? I was like, well, you know, the thing that finally won it was even brothers in the hood changed their name. Don't know brother in the hood, especially if he want any street cred or any clout. Want nobody in his in his clique to be you know, like this one brother in particular. I was like, so um, you wouldn't have no problem with me calling you Christopher then. Because his name was C-Dog. That's what everybody outside called him, C-Dog. I don't think most of the people he ran with even knew his birth name. His name was C-Dog. I was like, okay, well, cool. You don't want to call me Yapo, then it means that you won't have no problem with me calling you Christopher. And he got <laughs> he got upset. I was like, this is what I'm trying to talk to you about. And this was finally how I was able to win people to call me Iapo, right? So, um, so finally, it catches on. I'm in medical school. You understand what I'm saying? All of my professors, they see my birth name and they say, do you want to be, do you have a nickname that you want? I say Iapo and everybody, even when I graduated and got my degrees, during the graduation, my professors and the president of the school called me Iapo when I graduated, though, on my, you know, diplomas and shit. It says my birthday. Right. So here is this this walk in life. And Iapo was important. When when Africans change their name, it is a recognition of things that are important, a way to distinguish us. Right. As a conscious human being, if you will, you know, from, uh, from quote, slave mentality. I totally get it. I do not have any regrets for having lived as Iapo for, what is it, almost 10 years now, right? Since 2003, okay? I don't have any regrets about that. Shit, is that almost 20 years? Oh, uh-uh. For almost 20 years, for almost 20 years, being Iapo, it served me in this period in my life that it needed to, okay? That it needed to. The question is in shadow work is can you recognize when it is time to close a chapter before you can open a new one? That's what this is about. So I'm doing this work around the great cosmic mother. I'm doing this work trying to understand what is the essence of this thing that we are, we are confronted with that we call patriarchy. What have been the tools, the mechanisms, and the weapons that have been used to concretize its existence on the entire fucking planet? And we have all of these philosophical and political and historical ideas about what caused patriarchy and when did it start and how is everybody so open to receive it. We all sick with the cancer and the malignancy of patriarchy. How did that happen, right? The church is responsible. You know, these patriarchal religions are responsible. Okay, 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 okay. But patriarchy existed even before the church did. So that can't explain it, right? And at the, long, the end of the day, it was about getting back to the beginning. The beginning for every single one of us, whether you are a patriarchal, megalomaniac, maniacal dog bastard, or whether you are a saint or Mother Teresa, the one thing that binds every goddamn person on the entire face of the planet is our mother. Is our mother. I said mother singularly. It's the thing that binds us all. And the thing that our mother saw fit to make happen was to, was to create versions of her self that allowed the greater spirit of the universe to become manifest in her body. This is a relationship between the planet Earth and the entire cosmos. The entire cosmos, y'all ain't gonna wanna hear it because you're too fucking politically correct, you understand. But the entire cosmos is black and female. 
That's it. And the microcosm of that is our planet. And even more the microcosm of that is the, the person that incarnates as female. This is not a condemnation of men. It is not a condemnation of masculinity because I know through my dreams and what they tell me that I have been an incarnate as male many times. I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to teach you something right now, right? So it is not, and the, and the trigger response of those born male to, to those born females assertion of power within her relationship to the goddamn universe is just, it is just a trigger response of your malignancy, baby. We all have that malignancy. I have to beat back patriarchy out my brain every fucking day. I have to go to war with the patriarchal ideas that are still deeply embedded in my consciousness every day, baby. That's real. And so this is not a condemnation of men. This is not a condemnation of those born male. This is not a condemnation of those who carry a Y chromosome. It is not. Okay? It is a, it is a recognition that the singularly most effective weapon of those who have maintained power over the group of us for 6,000 years has been the radical reduction of the female on this planet to simple vessel, to mindless matter that is only here for the express purpose of God being able to be born. If, if, if God is male. You understand if God is male, right? That's it. And I'm telling you that if you can, if you can agree to that, if you can agree that this has been the most impactful weapon, this has been the most significant thing that has happened to us that we all have power over. And that the way to remedy this in our own consciousness first is to honor our mother in affirmations of daily gratitude whether we know her name or not, whether she was a criminal or not, whether she was mean to us or not, whether she was available to us or not, merely saying something as simple as, regardless of anything else, I am grateful that my mother said yes to my life when she could have said no. Because the thing that happens when you do that, all of these issues that we have, the how we perceive the valuelessness of our lives, how we perceive the valuelessness of our flesh, how we are so brutal to the swinging, you know, fat on our arms. I can't lift my other arm. I fell yesterday and jacked my shit up. Um, but how, you know, we are so, you know, vicious in our self-talk when we see stretch marks on our tits and shit, how we are so mean to ourselves when we see the fat jiggling on our abdomens, you understand, how we are so vicious to one another, whether verbally or even inside our head. Why that bitch walk out the house dressed like that? Don't she know she make everybody look bad when she do that? Does not matter. All of the negative self-talk, all of the negative villainous shit we say to others about their body and how they present in the world at that moment, Baby, look, the, the tears that we cry. I've had I've had surgeries. You understand? I had breast reduction surgery. I was 18 years old, looking at my boobs on a regular basis, talking shit about my boobs at 18 years old. At 18, looking at my body and just wishing they would go away. <laughs> looking at my body and speaking spells on my body since I was a kid. You understand what I'm saying? And it occurred to me, <laughs> it occurred to me that if I do this to myself, if I speak this way to myself, man, it can't, I, there's no way that I can value my mother. There's no way that I can value my mother who bore me who allowed me to sit in her body 
for nine months and twist her body and reshape her body permanently. Who gave blood to consecrate this contract that she signed with me in heaven to say, yes, baby, I'll let you, I'll, I'll let you come through me. I'll let you do that. I might even take care of you while you're here till you get to a place where you can fulfill your own destiny. This is the covenant that we have collectively ignored under the guise of someone else coming here, you understand, and giving his blood, that my mother's blood wasn't good enough. Mm -mm. That's what it teaches us. Our mother's suffering, our mother's blood was not good enough. This covenant was not good enough that we need to, quote, be reborn through this figure who gave his blood on the cross, you understand, in order to be saved from ourselves. Because, you know, we born in sin because our mothers are filthy whores who condemn mankind to hell shit. <laughs> and so this is work I've been doing. Like, what does this mean? Not philosophically, not mythologically. What does this mean in my personal life? All of these things that I've learned. What does it mean in my personal life? That I can't be looking in the mirror saying, damn, Yapo, your ass ain't got really big, girl. You got stretch marks on your booty and shit. You know, you know better than that. <laughs> damn, why why does sister always wear fucking yeah? Why why do these sisters be walking out with bonnets on their head, making the group look look bad and shit? I would never say something like that out my mouth to some person, but I thought it. And every cell in my body heard me think it. And me, in my opinion, of this woman who I don't know and how she walked out the fucking house is a reflection of me and my body. My cells accept that. That shit that I just said in my mind about her, my cells accept that I have said it about myself. And the only reason that I can say that about that woman in my mind is, again, because I don't see her as God. I don't see my mother as God. So I don't believe I'm God. You see. And I'm just going to try to tell you. I, no, I'm not going to try to tell What I'm going to tell you is. Is that. If my mother is God. And I say when I wake up in the morning. Thank God. Thank my God. Jacqueline Jeanette. Fitch, thank. Thank. Um, you know. Thank God. Known as Jacqueline Jeanette Floyd. Fudge, Floyd at the time, Fudge for saying yes to my life when she could have said no. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And I believe that. Then what it means is that I believe I'm God. Because what spirit told me in that ceremony is that only God can give birth to God. She is the one that connects us all. Our mother is the one that connects us all. Our mother's are the ones that connect us all, no matter how flawed they are, no matter how fucked up they are. They too are victims of colonization. They too are victims of patriarchy. They too, even in their madness, are the victims of this madness that has separated us from her. It is the official dissection of ourselves from the one. That's where it started, right? And so I said, okay, cool. I'm doing all this work. I'm doing all this work. What does this have to do with my name change? It has everything to do with my name change. Because I would get angry when people would not use my African name. Don't call me that. My response would always be, don't call me that. The only people that call me that name is my mama and bill collectors. That used to be my response. I would get upset when people would attempt to, quote, disrespect me by calling me my birth name. It means everything. So a few years ago, I started getting really, uh, started paying much more attention to astrology and numerology. And I heard a lecture about this. It never occurred to me because I've done all the numerology. I know what my, 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 my numbers are and whatever. 
But then this woman said, um, if you have a name that is not your birth name, you need to get your name read. Now she was, you know, saying you need to pay her. She'll do a reading to determine if the frequency of your name is beneficent or maleficent working against you or if it's working in your favor. She's like, so if this is a business name, a DBA or whatever. And uh, she said, but you should know this. She said, the name that you are born with, the name that is given to you by your mother when you are born is always beneficent. That's what she said. And that shit resonated with me. Despite the fact that I knew the political reasons why Africans take different names. I'm talking about Africans born in America. Why we take different names. Despite my political unity and understanding with that philosophy. When she said that, she said the name that you are born with is always beneficent. So regardless of the origin of the name, regardless of the history of the name, the name is always beneficent and it is always going to speak to your destiny in its fulfillment. Right? So when I did this, when I did this ayahuasca ceremony, this last ayahuasca ceremony that I did a year ago, and this woman told me, you have to change your name, Iapo, or you have to change the meaning of your name. And I rejected it, still went and did the little ceremony, you understand? Okay, I'm just going to change the meaning of my name because I earned this name. Everybody who knows me politically knows me as Iapo for the last 20 years. Everybody that knows me spiritually knows me as Iapo for the last 15 years. I earned this name. That was my, that was my thing, right? So even in its rejection, I did the little ritual to change the meaning of my name. My spirit was still kicking my ass like, bitch, you know that ain't what you, you know that wasn't it. She just gave you some shit you wanted to hear because you still, after six years, holding on to what we've been telling you for six years, change your name, change your name, change your name, change your name. And it wasn't until I got into this work with my mother. It wasn't until I got into this work with understanding the world, and what is the common denominator for all of us, rich or poor, black or white, you know, what uh, non-binary, gender non-conforming, trans, gay, straight, fat, skinny, what is the one thing that we know with emphatically that connects every last one of us? is that some woman somewhere had to bleed for you to exist. That's the thing that we know. That's the one thing that we know that everybody, all 7 billion of us currently living connects us all, is that some woman somewhere had to bleed for you to be here. That's it, right? I said, okay, cool. It's not just this covenant it's not just this contract that our mothers accepted with heaven to allow us to come through her. It's not just that. At the moment that we are born, we have a um, cosmic fingerprint, if you will. Okay? That's our chart. That's our astrological chart where every star and every planet was at the moment that our heads cleared our mother's body, right? So that astrological, cosmological fingerprint isn't just about the sun, moon, and stars, baby. When your mother was broken in half, all the way to her fucking anus to allow yourself to come through her and in ecstasy and in orgasm in, and in pain, she says, my baby is going to be called X, Y, Z, whatever your name is. This is like the, come on, man. Even those that are in the tradition, 
this is the sacrifice an animal on the altar to Orisha every time we spill blood as an offering. It is an ancient memory of the first blood offering made in history on earth is this offering of blood and tears that she makes to ensure that we can continue. And so the offering is made and the name is given to solidify this agreement between you and her, between heaven and earth, between heaven and earth. And so the name that my mother and my father gave me at the time that I was born, that's why the name is always beneficent. That's why this woman teaching this class, she said, it don't matter. Your name is always beneficent because it is not just about, quote, the letters and how they are positioned together. It is about the vibratory frequency created through this blood ritual that just happened between you and your mama. God damn it. <laughs> this was ritual that happened. And so all this time, it was necessary. I want to reiterate that. My time spent as Iapo, Moyende, and Gina was a necessary part of my destiny. But when I became aware that what I experienced with my mother was a ritual, it was a sacrifice that she made. It was a sacrifice she was willing to make by the shedding of her own blood to ensure my arrival as God, that I had to say, okay, I cannot reject this anymore. Cassandra is my destiny. Cassandra Faye Floyd is the name that my mother gave to me to ensure the fulfillment of my personal destiny in this life. That's what she did. And so, in addition to my meditation, my affirmation in the morning, thank God, known as Jacqueline Jeanette Fletch, that she, she said yes to my life when she could have said no. In addition to that, I look at myself in the mirror and I say, I am so grateful that I chose this body to be the instrument for the fulfillment of my personal destiny in this life. I am so grateful that I chose this body to be the instrument of the fulfillment of my destiny in this life. Because I cannot even honor my mother if I cannot honor my flesh, if I cannot show reverence to my flesh. To condemn myself is to condemn her. And we do it. We've all said it at some juncture in our life. Even if we was just rebellious ass teens, what do we say? I don't even know why I was born. Why did you even have me? This is a condemnation that is still based in patriarchy that hurts our mothers, first of all. It hurts them because she knows what she did. She knows what she sacrificed for you to be here. She knows, whether she knows it consciously or, or spiritually, she knows what it took to accept this contract from heaven, from you. You petitioned your mother. You don't have to believe that. I'm just telling you what it is. You, as God, in the cosmos, petitioned your mother. You said, look, tapped her on the shoulder. And you said, look, you're pregnant right now, you understand? And it's me. And what I want to know is, is will you accept the contract, you understand, for me to come through you because there's a life that's in store for me only if I come through you. I can't have this. I can't have this experience if I come through anybody else. It's got to be you. And what I'm asking is, is will you allow me to come through you so I can have this experience on earth? And when she says, I am pregnant and I'm going to remain pregnant, this is her accepting this contract with you. So she knows. She knew when she found out she was pregnant 
that her life was permanently transformed. Her identity in this society was permanently transformed. And yet she still said yes to you. She still said yes to your life. This, this dynamic this this ritual, this initial this initial ritual that we all must go through. This ritual is the reason that patriarchy exists. Patriarchy exists as an antithesis to the original power. It's hatred of women. It's hatred of others. It's hatred of the earth and of the water and of the air and of the trees is based in this relationship between we and our mothers. This hatred that of all the power that patriarchy has produced for itself, there is one thing that it cannot have and still cannot maintain ownership over, though it tries. It tries in birthing rooms. It tries in hospitals. It tries in every, it tries with abortion rights issues. It tries in every possible way to seize ownership of the first blood ritual ever to exist on this planet and the power that comes from it. That's it. And if you know that and you can accept that that is what it is, then it seems to me, even as you are doing those works and those things out in the world, political work and writing to your senator and going to vote and doing spiritual work and doing roots and doing magic and all the other stuff that we do, if we can accept that patriarchy requires all of the time the radical reduction of the female body to mere vessel, vescular servant to the group, then it will remain in power. That's it. That once we are really honoring our mothers. This ritual that I'm telling you, once we start honoring our mothers, it makes it so much more effortless to honor the earth, to honor each other, because we know it's the thing that binds us all. It is, right? And so let me just, I didn't intend for my, and that was supposed to be my truck, but I didn't intend for it to last that long, but it is important, yo. It is important what is happening to me. It is important what is happening to us because we get caught up in these, these superficial, fucking superfluous conversations about what it means to do shadow work and to do shadow work and it does not radically change you and it doesn't change you in a way that is fucking uncomfortable and shit. You ain't did no shadow work, baby. And I'm talking about uncomfortable. I am talking about keeping you up at night, having you in tears and shit before you're able to have a breakthrough. And this is what this has been for me. So I want to talk to you briefly about my name, the name my mother and my father gave me when I was born. And to speak to you about what this woman said, that no matter what your name, no matter what the background of your name, when you are born, the name your parents give you always energetically and cosmologically beneficent. Okay? So my name at birth is Cassandra Faye Floyd. Okay? So Cassandra, I always knew kind of a version of the meaning of the name Cassandra because my dad was kind of into Greek mythology and he used to tell me as a kid, but his version of what he told me was kind of fucked up. He used to say Cassandra means you're you know, it means you're going to break a lot of hearts. And I was like, you know, what kind of thing is that to tell a little girl? I, I, it didn't seem like something awesome to me, but whatever. So I never even dug deeper until I became an adult into the meaning of my name. And now ha, that's why you are all seeing Cassandra Faye Floyd as like my profile names on everything now. Cassandra, for those that don't know, was a character in Greek mythology who was a mortal woman. And uh, she was beautiful. And um, Apollo, Apollo fell in love with her, the god, the sun god, Apollo, fell in love with Cassandra, if you want to call it that, 
because Apollo had a really filthy habit of just raping motherfuckers and shit, right? Apollo falls in love with Cassandra. She does not, um, she rejects his advances. She's like, I'm not, I ain't, yeah, I know you a God and everything, but I ain't really feeling you like that. But before she rejected him, you know, to woo her, he gave her a gift. The gift was of the gift of prophecy. Was of the gift of prophecy. Okay. And so when she rejected him, he was outraged, he was angry, and but he could not, a God could not take back a gift. So what he did was to curse the gift that he gave her. So her legacy was to be able to see truthful prophecies, but no one would believe them. Cassandra, so many of you have seen the movie that Brad Pitt was in called Troy, right? Cassandra was written out of the movie, but she was an integral part of the story. She was the one that warned against bringing the horse into the kingdom. She's like, look, the horse is bad news. You understand what I'm saying? If you don't know the story of uh, the tro of the fall of Troy, um, micro short version, um, Troy, the walls of Troy could never be penetrated, right? They were unbeatable. Nobody could penetrate them. They had the world, these world mastery, you know, um, ar um, archers and shit. So they were never bested. And so uh, when Memnon came uh, to fight Troy because one of the Trojan sons slept with his wife or whatever, um, they got bested. Like everybody gets bested. So Memnon had this idea. What we gonna do is we gonna act like we done retreated. We gonna make all the ships disappear. You understand know what I'm saying? We gonna take one ship. We gonna break that bitch down, and we're gonna construct a big ass horse. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna send our best assassins in the horse to penetrate the walls. Right. And so the king of Troy was a hyper spiritualist. And even though his generals were like, oh, I don't know, this is kind of this seemed kind of sketch to me. Um, his spiritual advisors was like, no, we need to bring the horse in. We, it is a, it is an exception of their, of their defeat. We need to offer the horse as an offering to Apollo, blah, 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 blah. And so because he's hyper spiritualist, you know, he was kind of leaning to their side. Cassandra comes in the room, who is this prophetess that everybody has reduced to crazy, right? Um, who says, look, the horse is bad news. Don't bring it in, whatever, whatever. So when she came in and made her opinion known that it was more to the spiritual side, everybody was like, um, everybody was like, okay, this bitch is crazy. So we going to bring the horse in. See, he was already lean. He was debating, you know, between his generals who were saying, nah, the horse is a bad idea. We need to burn that shit where it is. The spiritualist was like, no, we need to bring it in, have a party, offer it to Apollo. She sides with the generals. She says, no, the horse is bad news. You need to burn that shit where it is. And so this was the thing that made the king lean to the side of the spiritualist because she was crazy and nobody ever believed her prophecies. So they bring the Trojan horse in and lo and behold, there are assassins in it and everybody gets murked and it is the fall of Troy. Okay, fine. So Cassandra's written out of that story with Brad Pitt and I believe for reason. Um, and Cassandra, uh, this is her legacy. Now, the name itself obviously is of Greek origin. And what it means, it has several meanings because of the dynamics of her story. But its name breaks down to um, the uh, etymological breakdown of the name is shines on men, shines on men, right? And so one of the official name meanings is she who shines light on mankind, right? She who shines light on mankind. But the other meanings of Cassandra, like dictionary etymological meanings of Cassandra, the catcher or entangler of men, uh, she who is who defends men, uh, she who sees, she who excels over men, unheeded prophetess, shining upon men. Um, she who fills men with love. Um, one who utters unheeded prophecies. Let me tell you, okay. One who utters unheeded prophecies. And then this was a quote from a website that I saw earlier today that was really powerful. This name has become a symbol of the archetypal character of someone who has prophetic insight 
um, that is obscured by insanity, turning their uh, revelations into riddles. Then there's another quote, cursed to utter true prophecies that are never believed. Now, I'm gonna talk about my first name for a minute. So my family background, both my parents were born in Louisiana, in New Orleans, okay? Both my parents are Leos. They were born less than 24 hours apart in the same city, okay? Um, my father's side of the family um, is, my dad used to tell, my dad was a, a Christian zealot. That's another story I'm going to tell for another day too. First, my dad was a Christian zealot, wrote, uh, raised in a, both sides of my family were Christian zealots, raised in hyper-spiritual families, if you will. But my dad's side of the family always used, my dad used to tell me when I was a kid, that um, our family was gifted. Our, he used to tell me that our family was gifted with the gift of foresight, but that our gift would be our curse if we weren't right with the Lord. That's what he used to say my whole life, that our gift would be our curse if we were not right with the Lord. Okay. So we are gifted with the gift of foresight. Now in me, it had been dumbed down a lot in my childhood. I can remember clearly the first time, like I saw the future. I was two. I remember it clearly. And um, my grandmother is the same way. My last living grandparent, my, my father's mother was diagnosed schizophrenic because she had the gift of foresight. Hence, us all believing, me and all my cousins believing that if we weren't, quote, right with the Lord, our gift would be our curse. My father had a nervous breakdown uh, because he saw his oldest brother die. He saw how he died and why he died three years before it happened. And so he checked out, right? Um, so my, I've had several family members that have been Baker acted. Baker acting means when you are hospitalized in an institution against your will, right? So I've had several family members that have been Baker acted that have been treated for schizophrenia. Close family members, like uncle, first cousins, close, right? And so when I read this today, this is this name has become a symbol of the character of someone prophetic is obscured by insanity turning their relations into riddles, muttering, mutterings, and utterances. This is, my, this is my childhood, memories of my childhood in plain black and white here as I'm going through this process of changing my life, right? So that's Cassandra, it's an entangler of men, she who shines light and kind through her prophecies and foresights. Anyway. So my middle name is even as interesting. I'm telling you a story about the beneficence of our name and the fulfillment of our destinies. I'm telling you. My middle name is Faye. Okay. Now this revelation that I just had about my middle name just happened with a patient three days ago. My middle name is Faye. Okay. Um, and Faye means several things too. It means belief loyalty. Um, it means it is a, it is a derivative of the word faith or the fae, like fairies, right? Uh, so it also means magical or enchanted. This is my middle name. My middle name is fae for a reason. My father was the youngest of four brothers. Okay. My father's father's name, my grand, my paternal grandfather, his name is fate, F-A-T-E. His father's name is fate, F-A-T-E. My, um, my grandfather's second born, first born son is fate. F-A-T-E. Okay. So my dad being the youngest said if he had a son, he was going to name his son fate. Right. But my dad only had girls. And so my middle name as his firstborn became Faye. A, a, you know, a nod to the name fate in my family line. Right. So Faye. So I accept both meanings because fate means faith or one of great destiny. That's my middle name. One of great destiny, magical and enchanted, 
belief, and loyalty, okay? But then it occurred to me, I had a conversation about six months ago with um, the Shango priestess in, um, in Tampa about how I had been called to study, just all random like, study the story of the three fates. So in Greek mythology, the, the three fates represent the past, the present, and the future. Birth, life, and death. They are always pictured as the great weavers of time, right? Baby, how about three days ago? It never even occurred to me until three days ago when I was talking to this woman that I am a descendant of the three fates. Fate senior, fate junior, and fate, uh, fate the, um, the first, right? And, and that is my middle name. To me, that was powerful. I had just been studying the three fates, though I'd never studied them. These, these women who connect all the threads of time, who are pictured as grand weavers of the universe, of the past, the present, and future as one thing, as one phenomenon. And I am a descendant of the three fates, right? So when you see like on certain sites, like I think it's my TikTok and um, I changed everything last night, my TikTok and something else, um, my surname is Daughter of the Fates, right? And then my last name is Floyd, which is Welch um, in origin, and it means gray or the gray haired, right? Um, it also means the hollow or the flood, <laughs> the hollow or the flood, right? But as the gray haired, um, the sub meaning is one who's wise beyond their years. So this is my last name. So these are my names, Cassandra, Faye, Floyd. Um, you know, she who shines light on mankind, um, she who shines light on mankind um, is one of great destiny and wise beyond her years. This is my name that I had been running away from for the last 20 years, that I had been rejecting for 20 years. I don't have any regrets. The Apomoyende and Gina served a purpose. That purpose was to inform me through a life of struggle that my destiny was bigger than struggle and that the benevolence of my name always spoke to my destiny. It always spoke to who I was intended to be. When, my, when I saw the life in store for me through choosing my mother, through having the sister that I have, right? Erica, Denise, Floyd, and her destiny, right? So anyway, that is the very long version of why, and I couldn't let the day go by. I was tired. I hurt my arm, so I'm walking around all crippled. You see, I did some cupping on my arm earlier, um, but I was like, you know what? I can't let the day go by without sharing, um, without sharing why people are going to be I still have an um, Iapo attached to certain things because it couldn't be changed. So you still should be able to search Iapo and still find me on social media. But this is my official announcement of the official change of my name back to the name of my birth, which is Cassandra Faye Floyd. I will not be offended if people through habit still call me Iapo, but you should know that my name is Cassandra. And I will no longer introduce myself as Iapo whether here or whether out in the world, that I accept this blood offering that my mother made in order to ensure my life and the fulfillment of my destiny in this life. I honor the flesh that she sacrificed to allow to come into existence as it is a mirror of who she is as God in the flesh. So... I hope that this was helpful. I hope that somebody was fed from this. I hope that you can hear it for the spirit through which it comes. It wasn't to hurt anybody's feelings or to, you know, to offend anyone. But this 
something as seemingly simple as this is the crux of all things. It is the key that we all come here with to make sure that we change the world. It is the thing that we don't have to pay a penny for, but that can actually radically change in real time the world. That's it. It's that simple. You know, and if the Bible says that the devil is the author of all confusion, and that is what we have been confronted with, is confusion, then it seems that the simplistic, the demystified, the revelations is what we need to radically transform the earth. Yeah. So hopefully that was helpful. I'm so thankful all the comments i've been seeing them i have i don't really respond to comments live because i get distracted and when i have a flow of thoughts i can't be like piecing everybody up but know that i saw each and every one of you i am so grateful that you all tuned in hopefully you were fed from something that i said i can yell a uh, renee patricia shorty t anidra d um who else uh uh zakia ellen um Ama and Teresita, right? I hope I got everybody, um, but thank you again. And this is going to be posted. On, it's also on my YouTube channel. Um, so I will also shout out this book. I am reading three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, the Great Cosmic Mother, Rediscovering the Religion of the Earth. This is a book to get into. It is not information consumption that's happening within these pages. It is a is the web. It is this web that we all must recognize. There are these moments, these sparks, these things that happen when the webs, when the strands of the web cross and make a connection, right? That inform us that we're in the right place at the right time, hearing exactly what we need to connect our ancient self to our current self, to demystify that which has been kept from us, which has been kept out of plain sight, which has been denied us to extract and exploit our power. That's what this is. That's what this is for me to say that I honor my mother, that I am so grateful for this blood sacrifice that she made to ensure my existence that I am grateful for the flesh shaped in her own body that became me. So that's it. <laughs> that's it. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. And I will probably be back on tomorrow because there's some other shit. I'm going to just be sharing with y'all every day. I'm going to just let you know. Tomorrow, my ambition is to talk about my first ayahuasca experience. Um because it's kind of been a soapbox of mine lately about what is happening in um, ceremony, um, what is what I am experiencing when um, other people talk to me about ceremony. And it's not coming from a place of judgment, right? It is coming from the same place of this conversation we just had. That And so my first walk with ayahuasca... Um, was permanently impactful, permanently transformative. And um, and so, you know, I've written about it extensively, but like I need to share it because um, it's important. It's a part of this walk that we're all doing together. All of us are connected through this thing that we talked about earlier. All of us are connected. And the thing that connects us is not ambiguity, baby. It's not some abstraction. The thing that connects us all is the blood of our mothers. That's it. <laughs> the thing that connects us all is the blood of our mothers. So, you know, um, ayahuasca was what showed me that. Ayahuasca was what showed me what has to happen in order to radically, quickly transform the relationship to us and the entire planet. 
And so that's what I'm going to be sharing with you tomorrow. That may be a pretty extensive conversation too, but uh, yeah. Um, so I will log off now. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can reach me if you want to email me or if you want to inbox me on Facebook, if you're watching from Facebook, if you're watching from YouTube, you can email me at releaseheartcenter at gmail.com, releaseheartcenter at gmail.com. Um, for those that are in the Los Angeles area and you may want to consult with me about treatment or about readings, you can also email me there at releaseheartcenter.com. I mean, releaseheartcenter at gmail.com. And um, also for those that are tuning in YouTube, please, please, please share, like, subscribe to my page. I am in a hard, I'm in a hardcore battle to get the minimum followers and watch hours that I need to monetize my channel. I'm going to just be blood raw with you. You understand what I'm saying? I do healing work, right? but I, I cannot, I do a lot of studying for what I share with you. I spend many, many hours because I know what my call is. You understand? And so what I need is for what is here to, to afford me the ability to continue to study and to continue to deconstruct this fucking veil that remains over all of us, right? So I need you, even those that are watching via Facebook, to go to my YouTube channel, Cassandra Faye Floyd, right? And subscribe and like, and what is it? Follow, like, and share if anything resonated with you right? I need that to happen. I need you to tell 10 people, go follow this sister's page. Please, please, please do that. I need my life experience, the $250,000 worth of student loan debt that I am in for the multiplicity of degrees that I have to make me money and my, my um, value not be tied to my expenditure of labor hours per hour, okay? I'm just keeping it real. So I need that to happen. So stop what you're doing for five minutes, two minutes, and follow me on YouTube, please. And thank you. And I will be back again tomorrow to talk to you about my first experience, my first walk with Mama Ayahuasca.